If you just like to, either on your own or the people around you, try out these questions, any questions that are on that material. So, which type of bid is best and why? Thank you. Um, if you were in a group, uh, if you're going to choose five of them, which would they be and how would you rank them? Mm -hmm. Which two are most alike, least alike? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, uh, 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 The issue is the uh, because it's doing a lot of time to grow, and I like that. I like it's not really, it's not the drop in the water, it's not being immersed. It's something that I can achieve. The message is that I care about the place and spend time on the process. Why? Session by engaging your coaches in high order thinking, then they are implicitly learning rather than being told. Did anyone have an answer for which one is <coughs> and why? Have you ever thought about that? Um, the Fu Manchu. What was your reasoning there? Because um, my understanding of the Fu Manchu is that those bits down the side are not attached to the face. Uh, awesome. AKA Ming the Merciless, and therefore that's shown considerable A restraint and B care. <laughs> so it's third in from the right on the top row. So you remember Ming the Merciless from. Uh, uh, flash, flash. So when you like shake your head, they would. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, you could braid them. You could braid them. Oh, they just hang it down. Handlebar, but loose. Yes, because you'd have to grow that, shave everything else, so you'd also have to have sort of... That's horrendous. What I'd describe as... 
Wings. What are those things that you use to put your laundry up? Heads. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you still use them, actually? Yeah. yeah. I don't. Um, <laughs> You probably don't do the laundry. Are you putting that forward as the world's best coaching question? <laughs> what are those things you use to put your laundry on? Yeah. It's, philo it's a philosophical washing line, yeah, yeah. not a literal <laughs> one. So, yeah. It's a good question. It's a good Yeah, the, all sorts of ways of engaging with stuff like this. The idea, though, is to, to think high order thinking. This mastery question is going to make you do it. Well, obviously, it's the what happens. Uh, what happened, who did it, when did it happen, it's why, what, if, how, can you group, can you rank. Uh, working with some students once on this and they came with their own questions about it. That's the way you can start with uh, coaches, getting them to generate the questions <laughs> they would want to ask about their coaching. Um, but one group of people I work with tried to <coughs> work out the order, the best order in which um, you could grow all of them yeah. with the least shaming. Wow. Going from the Federation standard to the one with the least on it was quite, you have to do a bit of backtracking at certain points. Um, but there's some clear starting and end points, I think. Um, but there we are, that's, that's a mastery question. This is um, a great way, if, if you have a coachee who is more um, kind of analytic, more methodical, more product and process based, you can actually give them this process. Um, this is called nine way thinking because there are nine stages to go through. And it's, it's very straightforward for folks who, who aren't maybe comfortable with the open nature of coaching and they'll kind of where I like to know where I'm going, this works for them. Basically, you, you, you do the, look at a video of a session or, or you observe a lesson or you hear from the coachee what they wanted to work on. And then you just ask these, these three questions first. What's the most positive thing about the teaching? What's the most negative thing? What are you actually curious about? If you can't put it into a negative or positive category, it just interests you. Then you go, uh, right, can you work out a question you'd like to ask about your, your teaching? Let's make a comment. Let's make it non-judgmental. And do you have an idea? And at each of these stages, the coaching may or may not know, and it'll be your job to facilitate them getting an answer here. And then we move to a call to action, which is, well, based on that, what would you like to keep in your teaching? What do you want to change? Uh, so what do you want to keep? What do you want to completely get rid of? And what do you want to keep but make different? And this is a beautiful way, then, of not only recording a coaching session, but structuring it. Because you can then lead your coachee away from the structure and say, would you like to just pick three of them for our next coaching session? <coughs> okay. I'd like to look at the positive things, ask a question and decide what I'm going to change. Or, I'd like to find out about the things that interest me, um, I'd like to comment on them and decide therefore what I'm going to remove, or whatever. You can go from giving a nine way thinking to asking them to come back with three. Finally, um, sorry if I'm throwing this at you, but I want, I want to get to, to the other game. Um, 3D questioning, uh, basically three parts of question, so you can investigate and play on your curiosity about what coaching is doing, how we take scanning questions, all at the same level. You're scanning around, trying to find out what is the issue here. So, um, what went on? What can you see in the lesson? What do you notice? What else do you see in here? How would you describe? It's trying to get a clear description of what's going on. Drilling questions. At that scanning stage, something will trigger. You think, yeah, that's the thing we want to go on. It's, it's the, it's the behaviour of that group of children. So you go down into that, focusing on one topic that's come up through scanning. Can you explain more about it, how to, about it than the clean language? What kind of non-engagement is it? Is there anything else about the non-engagement? Whatever the topic is. And then bringing to bear things like the mastery question is high order connecting. So we've drilled down a couple of times. What is it in common between the misbehaviour of that small group and that child that you have later on in the day? Is there a connection? So scanning, drilling and connecting. Three dimensions <coughs> questioning. Here is the <coughs> first or well, second activity. Um, Working pairs, A and B, A thinks of the current challenge they have in the classroom. If, they, if you haven't got one, well hey! Um, instead, think of one you have had or someone else has and pretend. 
they asks you a question about it. You have to reply with a question. They have to reply with a question. Nothing but questions. The record I've ever come across in a situation like this is, is ten, a bit like tense. So five questions, five questions. Um, it usually stalls around the two, three mark because it's challenging, but as a way of honing your coaching skills and having a bit of fun, it's, it's a beautiful way to see if and how you can keep bringing the questions out in response. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Any yeah. clarification yeah. needed? So you're only allowed to ask questions. When you finish the first round, uh, swap, and I'll be pleased to hear if anyone gets past 